One of the most alarming insights I had was five years ago when my grandmother died. I was with her. She was 95 years old. And she was an hour from death. And she was admitted to the hospital about 2 o'clock in the morning. And one of the things that the hospital did was that they weighed her for some reason. They had to have, you know, they're into their, their records and keeping track of things. It's, you don't get into heaven if you don't have a weight certificate. And maybe if you excess baggage, you don't get in or something. I don't know what their thinking is. But there's this kind of linear... Uh, all this record keeping. I always wonder about all the people who died before we had records, before we did that, you know, whatever happened to all of them. And so she weighed 133 pounds when she entered the hospital, and, she, and we all knew that she was very close. And then life passed from her body. I mean, we watched as life literally uh, left her body. And there she was. There was this package of, uh, it was getting cold and stiff, and it was like this package of bones and stuff matter and it certainly wasn't my grandmother that package there that was now deteriorating and gonna be gone and when they weighed her for the death certificate she weighed 133 pounds <laughs> exactly the same so that whatever it is that constituted her life <laughs> her very life her very essence is invisible and weightless you can't weigh it and that's true for you that's true for every single one of us that what our life really is all about it defies the world of form it defies the world of linear and yet we spend almost all of our energy and our time here in this part of our consciousness in form believing that this is who we are when you learn to go into your mind when you learn that your mind is really a place <laughs> that you can visit and exquisitely touch the face of god you can remove the tension and stress and everything else that's troublesome in your life when you give yourself time to experience your true humanity. You know, John Quincy Adams sat in the White House. He was our sixth president, and he was the most spiritual man who ever sat there, I think. He was a man who rejected slavery while other people, including one of his best friends, Thomas Jefferson, practiced it. He was a man who was highly spiritual and very intellectual, perhaps the highest intellect of anyone who ever was there. And this is what he wrote about himself three days before he died in a letter to Thomas Jefferson. He used his house as a metaphor for his body. And this is really the message of, of what I have to say here today. He said, John Quincy Adams is well, but the house in which he lives at the present time is becoming dilapidated. <laughs> it's tottering on its foundations. Time and the seasons have nearly destroyed it. Its roof is pretty well worn out. Its walls are much shattered and tremble with every wind. I think John Quincy Adams will have to move out of it soon. But he himself, he himself is uh, quite well, quite well, thank you. <laughs> that concept of understanding that universal intelligence that is a part of our consciousness is not just something for mystics and uh, people to uh, go in loincloths and contemplate in caves. It's for us. It's for every one of us in the practice of our daily lives, in whatever business we're in.